Hi, my name is Paul Grogan and welcome to the next in a series of Gaming Rules Quick and Dirty Reviews. In this video I'm going to be talking about Lords of Hellas, designed by Adam Kwapinski and published by Awaken Realms. This game was on Kickstarter in June 2017 and I believe started getting delivered to backers in 2018. I've had the chance now to play this game four times, a mixture of three and four player games, so I feel uh, that I've got enough information to be able to give you my review. However, and I'll say this right at the start, I want to play this game again. I don't feel that I've discovered everything that this game has to offer. So I know this is a quick and dirty review, but I kind of want to play this game another 20 times and then and then give a, a full review because there are still things about this game that I'm, I'm not sure about. Um, but anyway, four plays in, I'm going to tell you what I think about it now. So there is a lot to like about this game. And this is not the kind of game that I normally play. When people see me playing this game, they're like, Paul, where's the little wooden cubes? You've got miniatures, you've got monsters, you've got combat, you've got, you know, things on a map. This is not the kind of game that I normally go for. So I, I will admit I was, I was very reluctant about it. And a number of people who know the kind of games that I like was like, don't worry, Paul, it's gonna be fine. It's not dice for combat. There's things in it, and they were saying it was really good. So I was very keen to give it a try. And overall, this is gonna be a positive review because there is so much about this game that is cool. Um, there's a few things about the game that I, I'm not too keen on or that I'm not sure about yet, but overall, there's so much about this game that's good. There's a lot going on, but for a start, this game is extremely thematic. Now, for those people who know me, you know that I'm more along the, the Euro side of the games. I'm not bothered about theme in a game at all. I want a good game. And a lot of thematic games for me focus on the theme and the games themselves are not actually that good. In this game, I actually think this is a good solid game. I'm not saying it's perfect by any means, but it's a good solid game with a lot of good mechanics in it. And there's a lot of theme in the game. So some of the things that you can do in this game. Well, you, you have your armies on the board, which are your hoplites, um, and you also have your hero. Your hero is, is one little figure with a coloured base. And the way that the hero movement works is that they can move around. They're not, in, not affected by other armies or anything like that. So you can't have hoplites moving into another area without a fight, obviously. But your... Your hero can go around the board, it can fight monsters, it can go on quests, it can do all sorts of things. So a lot of the rules in the game make absolute thematic sense. And then when you go on the quest, the quest is in a particular area. And when you're on the quest, you remove your figure from the map and you put him on the quest space and you move down the quest and you'll get the reward based on the quest. That's, that's all really cool. Um, the way that the monsters work is each of the monsters has like special abilities. And those special abilities are actually tied in to the creature. So the Medusa, for example, has a passive ability that the hoplites in her area can't move. Yeah, that makes sense. And all of the things in the game seem to fit thematically with, with what's going on. So yeah, I really like that. Now, a quick note, what you're seeing here is the game with the terrain expansion included. The terrain expansion includes these little cities and these little shrines. Uh, they're really cool. So. Uh, so I've decided to shoot the video with, with those in there, but they don't come with the base game. There's also a lot of, I believe, add-ons and stuff like that with extra gods that you can get, which provide extra variability. I've just got the basic three gods. Now, you'll see that there are huge miniatures on the board, and they look really nice. They are very impressive. I'm not a big miniatures fan by any means, but these are very nice and they are very impressive. I'm now going to touch on one of the downsides of the game in the... Right now, they look really cool. You won't ever see this in a game. At the start of the game, they all start off as just the base, and that's it. And as the course of the game goes on, and this is actually a really cool mechanic, you, you build the monument up bit by bit. So the most impressive miniatures in the game, you don't actually really see, well, you, you know, you're, in the games I've played, because there are different routes to victory in this game, and one of them is building a monument, and then three turns later, whoever's got it wins, um, is, is you build them up. So it, it is quite cool that they do get built up gradually as the game goes on. Um, oh, just dropped him there. Sorry, Zeus. But as I say, you will, you will not see all of these big miniatures on the board at the same time. 
uh, and getting that back on is a bit tricky. But anyway, so yeah, so that's that's good. So you you can build these monuments. As I said, there's a lot going on in the game. The the turn structure for me, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say this is a positive thing. Even though the first time we played, this really caught us out because it's a little unusual. You basically on your turn you do a number of regular actions, um, and it's all summarised on the player aid, which is really good. Um, and then you get to do one special action. And when you're doing a special action, you've basically got your player board here and you choose which of the six special actions you want to do. And then you mark it with a counter and you can't do that special action again until all the counters have been removed. And play continues like this around the table until somebody builds a monument. And when one player builds a monument, it, it's like that's kind of the end of a round, but a round could actually be multiple players having multiple turns. It basically is a sort of reset. Everybody clears their special action markers, which means you can start doing things again. Um, but also at that point, the monsters move and you get an event from the deck. So building a stage of the monument triggers a number of things in the game. But as I say, the, the, it could go round two or three times or one player could build a monument and then on the next turn, another player could build a monument. And that, as I say, when we first played it, because we're so, I'm, I'm so used to a, a structured, the game consists of this many rounds and each round has this many phases and I'm so used to that, it caught us out but it does allow for a very dynamic game um, and after I played it a couple of times I got used to it, I was like oh yeah I, I, I like this, this is, this is good. Um, what else about the game that I really like? I'm going to refer to my sheet of paper and check. Right, so some other things about the game. Uh, there's artifacts. Artifacts are cool. There's ways to get neutral artifacts. If you defeat one of the monsters, you get the monster specific artifact, which yes, is thematically tied to the monster as well. Um, and if you control an area with a monument, you get the, uh, the, the, uh, the artifact related to that god. So there are artifacts in the game and you use these as regular actions and they do cool stuff. There are also blessings. And I really like this part of the game. So building shrines, Depending on the shrine card that you're using, whenever you take a shrine off a red space, you'll see it says the, uh, the word draft. What that means is at that point in the game, whoever built that shrine will draw a number of blessing cards equal to the number of players plus one, take one of them, that's theirs, pass the rest to the left. These are special abilities for the rest of the game. So you will start off with, with none of these, but as the game goes on, you will get more and more of these blessings. And they're like, cool special abilities that all do different things and change the way the game works. So as I say, each individual bit of this game, I really like. Monster combat is new, it's different. I've not seen it done this way before. If there's another game that does it this way, then apologies, it's not new, but I've not played a game like this. It isn't dice for combat, it uses cards. Now, there is still a random factor in the, do you get the right cards? But it, it's very cool in the way it works because combat is played over a series of little combat rounds. You need to deal one damage at least to the monster in order to carry on fighting. If you can't deal one point of damage to it, then the fight ends and, and that's it. Assuming you deal one point of damage to it, at least, and play a card, dealt a point of damage, right? Then the monster attacks you. The player to your left will draw two of these monster attack cards, chooses one, and then you've got to try and defend yourself. If you don't defend yourself, you will take the result of the attack. Now, if you are able to defend yourself, let's say I was attacked with uh, six, for example, so I've played two cards worth six, because I defended myself, I get to draw two more combat cards. And basically the combat is a series of rounds. So you'll, you'll be like, oh, I'll, I'll deal two damage to it. Right, now he's attacking me. Oh, he's hit me, I'll defend myself. I'll draw two more cards. You will cycle through your combat cards because you need certain combat cards with certain icons to place wounds on certain parts of the monster. And it, it's quite cool. I, I like the way that the combat works in the game. Now, I mentioned at the start there's multiple ways to win. There's actually four ways to win. And I'm going to come on to... Uh, I'm not going to say it's a downside of the game because this is, this is where I haven't played it enough to realise this. But our first three games were won by somebody killing three monsters. And it felt to us that that was by far the easiest way to win. And the other victory conditions were like, well, that's impossible. Killing three monsters is dead easy. The fourth time we played it, we made a point of telling everybody, this is how everybody's won so far. And I think the reason why that happened is that if 
the other players decide to leave the monsters for one player, they'll just go around, kill three of them and win. The monsters are not an infinite resource. When they're killed, they are removed from the board and they new ones will only come in the game through event cards. So if you're playing a four player game and, and everybody is killing the monsters because killing the monsters does get you the artifacts, which is good then it's very unlikely that somebody is going to be able to kill three. If two players decide, oh, we're not going to bother killing the monsters, then yeah, one other player is going to be able to kill three of them and they're going to be able to win that way. So the fourth time I played it, it, it wasn't won that way. It almost was, but it, but it wasn't. Now, one of the things which I personally think from my limited experience with the game is a bit of a downside, and there is a big discussion about this on BGG, which I need to go and read and give my opinion on, but the way that the combat works with the monsters is really cool. I've mentioned that I like that. The problem is, if you don't manage to defeat the monster, and that can be down to luck, you can go into it with high strength, draw loads of cards, cycle through the cards and everything else, but then just be a little bit unlucky and not draw the cards that you need. And I'm not saying it's a, it's a big problem and it's not massively random, but there is that chance. The monster stays with its wounds. And then it's the next player's turn and they come along and they deal it one damage and they defeat the monster and that's a third of their victory. Kill stealing, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know how the game would work if you just said, look, if you don't defeat the monster, it heals all its wounds. That, I mean, that, that removes that problem. But I don't want to start going in and, and, and how ruling a game when, you know, I've only played it a few times and there might be something I'm missing. So anyway, that, that is something to watch out for if you are playing the game. Killing the monsters does seem the easiest way to win, certainly the way we played, unless everybody is watching for it and then basically killing the monsters so that another player can't kill the monsters. Um, so speaking of uh, other downsides of the game, right, I mentioned there was a lot going on. I mentioned that you have, well, I didn't mention it, but your own character has a special player power. I also mentioned the blessing cards. You will get additional powers as the game goes on. And then you've got your artifacts. And you've also got glory tokens that I didn't mention. Uh, and these are really thematic as well. You get one of them by completing a quest in that area or by killing a monster in that area. And when you've got one, it allows you to do really good stuff because you've got glory. You walk around and everybody knows who you are. So again, extremely thematic in the way that they work. When you combine all of this together, for some people, me as well, it's a bit too much. I'm like, Oh, I do this and I do that. Oh, and I've got this ability here. And oh, oh, I forgot. I've got this ability here. And our last game, I was playing Helen. And Helen's ability is that uh, other people's hoplites can't move into an area with your hoplite unless their leader is present or something like that. And I forgot about it. Uh, and Ian moved into my area. And therefore, that affected the result of the game. There's a lot to keep track of. For me, it was a little bit too much, and I think the chance of me uh, forgetting an ability when I'm playing the game is probably going to be quite high. Um, as I say, not, not a big problem with the game. I've played games with far more to remember than this. It's just something to watch out for. There are a lot of bits going on uh, that you will need to keep track of. Now, coming on to the most important part of the review, the rule book. Now, I'll be honest with you here. When this game started getting delivered to people uh, and I saw pictures of people playing it, I said to them, how's the rule book? And they said to me, it's not great. You're good. It's, it's okay, but you're going to have to look stuff up when you're playing. You're going to have some questions when you're playing and you're going to have to look stuff up. And that put me off. Uh, it put me off playing the game for probably two or three months, um, which sounds crazy, I know, but you know, I was working a bazillion hours a week. My brain was working on 12 different games at once. I didn't have the mental capacity to sit down, play a game and subject me and my friends to uh, similar experiences we've had in the past where we spend half the game Googling answers to rules. So I put that off I, and I eventually got round to playing it and I was like, this is okay. We had one question that we had to look up. The rule book was nowhere near as bad as I was expecting. I'm not saying it's, it's amazing, but it's fine. Um, I believe that there is another version online where they've added some extra clarifications, but overall, we were able to play the game. A couple of things we had to look up, but certainly nothing major. So yeah, um, for a game with a lot going on, I thought the rule book was, was okay. 
One thing I wasn't too keen on was the use of terminology in the game. And I don't know if this was a language issue or not, but these, these monster cards here, which have all of the monster stats on, they're called trays. They're called monster trays. And I'm not sure why. Um, so a little bit of odd terminology does cause a little bit of confusion when you're reading the rulebook. Um, not a major issue, but I've written it down on my piece of paper, so I thought I wanted to mention it here. Right, what else have we got to say? Ah, yes, video. Right, now, you know me, I create how to play videos. Other people create how to play videos too. If you want to learn how to play the game and you don't want to read the rulebook, or you do, um, Board Game Replay. BoardGameReplay.com, it's on there. I have watched the first half of the video. It's extremely good. So if you want to learn how to play the game, go and check out Board Game Replay. Uh, the video there is, is fantastic. It's really well done. Components wise, components are really good. Um, I mean, yeah, it's miniatures, but the miniatures are really good. There's a slight issue, a couple of them. So Hermes, oh, Priest has just fallen off. Hermes, the way that it's attached to the base, it's, yeah, mine broke. They sent me a replacement, obviously no problem at all with sending me a replacement, but I've now got this wrapped in bubble wrap in my box because I'm just a little worried about that, that joint there. So a couple of them, uh, most of them are absolutely fine, but there's a couple of them which I'm a little bit worried about um, because, you know, I think they could, they could snap uh, easily. But as I say, they sent me a replacement, so no problem with that. Other than that, I love the way that all of the hoplites for the individual players, the hoplites and the priests, and I haven't mentioned the priests, um, they're all different. They're all different molds for each of the player colors, which uh, is probably a stretch goal of the Kickstarter campaign, my guess, because it costs a lot of money. But it just looks really cool. It's one of those little nice touches in the game uh, that's really good. The cards are fine. All the components really are fine. Um, these uh, player aids are really good. They've got what happens when you send a priest to the god on one side, and they've got the entire structure of the hunt on the other side with a breakdown of what it takes to build, uh, to, to defeat all of the monsters. As I say, there's a lot, they've done a really good job with this game. I was quite impressed by the game. I want to play it again, as I said at the start. I want to play it more. I want to explore it more. I want to see if some of the, some of the other victory conditions are possible. The one where you build a monument and then three turns later, if you're in control of it, you, you win. I've not seen anybody get anywhere close to that. Um, we've had a couple of games where a monument did get built, you know, the full, but then the game ended the round after. So I, I want to explore that a bit more. I definitely want to play it again. Uh, I think they've done a cracking job with it. And that is my review of Lords of Hellas. If you agree with me, disagree with me, um, please put your uh, comments below in the YouTube video. I would like to hear from you. Uh, as I say, if you've had uh, similar experiences to mine with the game or different experiences, then, uh, then, then please let me know. Apart from that, just a quick shout out for my Patreon. Uh, this video has been created thanks to my Patreon campaign. So if you do enjoy the content that I make, then a lot of the content that I make is not paid for. It's funded through my Patreon. So the better the Patreon does, the more content I'll be able to create. Thank you very much to all of my existing Patreon supporters. Uh, and this was one of the ones that was voted on to be the game that I would review this month. And if you do want to support me, then the Patreon page is patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. And until next time, take care and thanks for watching.